and well, well, well welcome, welcome, and to the, it's the season opener of season three. Exciting times here for ATA. We've actually changed dates. There's been a lot going on. We've been filled in before. We have ma moved the days of F1 and GP2. So tonight I am not joined with Craig or Michael. I am joined by HLG. So hello, hello man. I'm back in commentating box. Yes, and we are here for the season opener for the F1 division tonight. F1's been moved to Thursdays and F1's uh, GP2's are now on Fridays. So the GP2 race, uh, which you should expect to see, uh, I think it's um, Ross or Shaq and... Uh, yeah, Ross or Shaq and Mr. Michael tomorrow. So you should hopefully have them to keep you company. So, my, my, Michael, my, Martin, the Martin, are you excited for tonight? I am very excited for tonight. I'm expecting some good stuff as we've already had someone leave. Oh, that's not the good. No, yeah, I'll get him an invite back. Yes. Yeah, I'm anyway, very we have tonight. We have, we have a pretty stacked grid. We are full qualifying tonight as we have 19 people. We've actually lost two because we were on 21. That's us too. Remember? Oh, right, okay. Well, we have essentially a full grid with us tonight, minus in one person, unfortunately. But we have a couple of people filling in who are just subs, there for people who don't turn up. There are Mr. Pirate Pat and Mucka. The rest of them, as you can see there, are where Giant, Lucky1210, Master Croc, Craig Senna, Beer, Mr. Michaels, Ross Austin, and so on and so forth. We've also had four drivers from GP2 move up. So that's Floodline, Boutel, uh, Master Krog and Frantique, they've, the top four from GP2 moved up and the bottom four in GP, not in F1 moved down. So the bottom four in F1 have been moved down into GP2 and they'll see them tomorrow. So what are you expecting from these guys that are currently uh, starting tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm expecting some very close competition up front. Uh... Um, well, at least I'm hoping for that anyway. I know from last season that George Guyton is expected to take pole, but I think he could be closely followed by a few of them, uh, including Michael, uh, Rossos, and possibly a few others. Um, yeah, there's and then, too many to mention. Just, there's too yeah. many to mention. We do have a stat grid with us tonight. Uh, Michael, uh, Martin can actually talk you through the teams and let you know who's driving what car tonight. I can indeed. Okay, so, uh, driving the Haas tonight, who are normally the Haas drivers as well, you have BR Mr. Michaels and Matty GB, who I believe are both out on their outlap, so they're out uh, for viewing. Um, then on the Torosso team, you have Finley on XB XBL, or Xbox Live, and the, one of the previous GP2 drivers, Fran Teak, uh, then in the Mercedes, you have George Garton, and then filling in for Fuming Boy tonight, you have uh, Mr. Pirate Pants. In the Williams... Is it Mr. Pirate Pants? I'm pretty sure it's Mucker, is it not? Uh, no, Mucker... Ah, uh, no, it is Mucker, you are correct. So dumb. Yeah. My mistake. Uh, yeah, then in the Williams, uh, you have Trex Electric. And Boutel. Then in the Ferrari, uh, which some people are saying is probably a good contender for constructors this uh, season, is Master Krog and Craig Senna. Yeah, very strong pairing with that team. As you already know, uh, Krog was already GP2 driver for Craig Senna, and they managed to get paired up. Uh, when it came to the driver draw, he was straight in there for him. He was like, no hesitations, Krog. Yeah, that was a that was an insta pick for him. Oh, as Michael as oh, uh, oh. Well, something's not went right with him. Let's have a look. Was that a was? that was terminal damage? Oh, I wonder where he's lost that then. I don't know. He has said that he has been struggling around Australia the last couple of tight days trying to practice in that. So. Oh, tonight could be a struggle for him, as he was uh, the champion last season. Uh, yeah, but then back to the team. Decided that, oh, Pirate Patton scores mega wide in the last turn, the well, second last turn. 
Yes, uh, right. On to the teams. Uh, with Frankie actually setting up. Uh, blah, 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 blah. QB. Oh, the nice the best does the same thing. Okay, so yeah, back to the teams. Uh, in the Renault, which is my team, you have Elite Ryan and Nicholas. So uh, Nicholas is one of the new drivers for the league. So we'll have to see what he's got. Uh, the McLaren, you have Floodlines and Aware Giant. And then in the yeah, Red Floodlines, Bulls, as you know, last year was in the it was in the uh, McLaren as well. So he should have some decent form as he's already driven this car for a season. As Loki goes to the top of the timesheets with a 123. Yes, three, so he's just taken it by a tenth from Eyes. It's not by a lot, but speaking of Luki, he's in the next team. So in the Red Bull team, you have Luki and Glazed Gator. Uh, in the Force India, you have, uh, who isn't here today, JJ Gamer, which is, actually, I think, that's, I believe that's who Pirate Pants is actually filling in for. We just double, he's not actually out yet, so I can't double check what car he's in. But I believe he's filling in for him. And then last but not least... In the Sauber, which I'm pretty sure most people did not want this season, you have Eyes the Best and Russell Shack. As Frantique goes to the top of the sheets again, 23 dead. Frantique, so he's got that himself. He may have been a GP2 driver, but he's here to take it to all of the F1 drivers. Yeah, definitely. I see George Garton going past him there. Yeah. Uh, He's one of the ones to watch because he was quite pacey uh, towards the end of the season when he did join us. But we'll be able to see him on full attack mode straight off tonight for the season opener. Uh, do you think that potentially one or two drivers could even pull off a one-stop? Because there has been rumours uh, yes. that one or two drivers are attempting it. Yes, uh, in fact, there's actually a, a bit of a rumour going around that Frantique is going to do a one-stop, but not the traditional one-stop you'd see around here. Apparently he's going to do the ultra softs and the super softs, and in practice he has managed to put it off with some pace. So that could be an interesting one to watch tonight. Mm. Ultra softs, obviously, as we know, aren't the most durable tiles of of what Pirelli brings. Uh, but hopefully we can actually see potentially something getting worked as Floodlines topples for Antique there. Uh, not by much, only 13 hundredths of a second, as you can see there on the left. Uh, hopefully we can see these times just getting faster and faster and faster as we continue on through the night, uh, well, through the session I should say. Uh, hopefully we can get an even better race from that and hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can uh, get some uh, good racing from all the guys. As you can see, oh, Frantic there coming into the pits. Uh, so we've got already 13 people that have set laps. We've got a couple that I haven't. I think a couple of them are still on laps trying to improve. You remember, it's the top 15 that go through to Q2, so we'll be losing uh, 16th, uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th. But we'll lose Michael as he's not actually set a lap, so he'll be at the back of the grid, no doubt. Yeah, he will be at the back of the grid. I think unless someone manages to get themselves disqualified, and then in which case they'll be put at the back. But at this moment in time, Michael is... Yeah. As we see, just... Minor places shuffling, so at the moment we've got your top 10 is Floodlines from Frantique, Eyes the Best, Krog, who's actually set quite a decent time for his uh, rookie first out in, the, in uh, the F1 division. So showing them he's got some decent pace to keep it with some of these guys. Uh, you've got Loki in 5th, Trex in 6th, Rossost in 7th, Finlay, Craig, then Elite Ryan. Then it's just a battle of who can be faster further down as the top 12 are separated by no more than a second, well less than a second. Yeah, it's very close. Uh, as I have received a message from Michael. Yep, yeah, Michael's very upset with that. He uh, doesn't seem very happy. He knows he's going to be starting at the back. As George Carton, uh, George Gartner should say, is just again... 22 6 he's just been doing this all of last year just as soon as someone sets a fast lap he just goes straight back out there and sets the next one yeah he just seems to find pace out of nowhere 
Here's the Purple Fairy, he's about to finish his lap as well. Oh, he goes a bit wide. Oh, he broke his wing but kept the car running. <coughs> so he should hopefully uh, get back to the pits and set another time as there's nine minutes left in the session. Uh, as Bertel's going quite slow, I think he's just getting. He's himself a, up. Yeah, he's starting a lap from what you can see there. Beautiful comes out the last corner, hits the DRS, and is going to start a flying lap round here at the Melbourne Park circuit we have here. As he comes into turn one, gets a nice, doesn't want to run too much on the Astro Turf. Same on the exit of turn two, run down into Brundle into turn three. Tricky is it's slightly kinked as you can see there. Uh, about third gear, fourth gear, uh, up into third again for the left right section you've got here. High speed right there, just flat out all the way down here until you're about to turn seven. And it's hard on the brakes. Into fourth gear, turns in nice, gets the apex beautifully. Up the gears into fifth, sixth. It will just climb the gears all the way up till the little uh, chicane bit is essentially what it is. Uh, turns in. You want to get as close to the as he oh so close to the wall. Carries flatter gear. Drops two. Oh, that was a big cut there. I don't think that'll be a counted lap. That surely has got to be an invalidated lap that time there. As he comes down the last couple of corners now, about three to go as he comes round. It's the second to last corner. Uh, yeah, and he's backed out of that. Uh, as he uh, comes yeah, well, the corner. On his lap. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were following uh, him around on his lap, but where Giant managed to place himself into 10th. Well, he pushed well, Craig well, out well, of the 10 there. Yeah, so the ones that are struggling at the moment are uh, Purple Fairy and Butel. They don't have a lap on the board, and that's unusual from these guys. Uh, Purple Fairy and Butel both have been strong qualifiers when they've been doing the leagues with us before, uh, so we should expect them to easily get through, but it's just ever so tight in that middle that middle pack from about 7th down to about 13th, 14th. It's just, if you can get a decent lap in, you're taking more places than you have in front. But it's going to be interesting to see how these drivers do with uh, their new teams, try and mould their team into potential championship or even race win teams. I've seen Mucka coming out the f coming out of the final corner now. Is he going to improve on his oh, lap? Oh, Butel spun! Uh, oh, big hit on the wall. Butel seems to be struggling. Very struggling the back as Pub Fair is going to cross the line. Is he going to improve? And he does up into 10th. He just needs to get that, that lap in. Then that's you. So, so it's all very tight in this... Run. So much tighter in this midfield as it is now. It's much more going to be battles and such. But Butel, uh, he's not having it his own way, is he, mate, Martin? No, Butel's definitely not having it his own way. He seems to be struggling around here. He uh, he had a spin uh, coming through the middle sector, lost his front wing, so he's having to come back in. He's going to have to put on a new set of tyres, which could be costly later into the qualifying sessions. And then have to come back out and try and set a quick lap to get him into that top 15. Yeah, and surprisingly, uh, there's only two people that are out on supers, and that's Trex and Rossos. Uh, so may they may be trying some some sort of uh, sneaky strategy. Obviously want to keep the Ultrasofts for Q2. Uh, need to remember in Q2 as well, that's the tyre that you'll qual that you'll race on from uh, if you get into the top 10 shootout. So, it could be all down to tyres, depending on what people go for. Uh, indeed, as Crink has retired and he's sat in 15th, so he's on that line. Oh, he's had an issue coming out of uh, turn 4. He's probably gassed up a little bit too much and just lost the back end. So, that's... Oh, uh, oh Ferry's out as well. He's manually retired from what I can see. So he thinks he's going to be safe. Uh, we're probably going to have a couple of retirements now, as I's the best thinks he's pretty safe up there. Uh, we still have drivers probably to do their fastest runs, so he may be definitely safe up there, but you never know. But Butel's not having it his own way. Trex is an eighth. Uh, so 
on board with Matty GB, the Haas driver, is he going to try and potentially grab some more places back in this early part of qualifying, probably just to get their eye in at the moment. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit of just, if you can get the lap in really, if you don't have any traffic or anything. But he is going through there on the rails as it is. Uh, comes down, hard break point, about the 100 meter board you want to break, turns in. He's got the number one, so he's obviously won his obviously career mode championship. It's why he has the number one on the car. Uh, so he's coming through the second class corner now, and we don't want to get too much of a run out wide. Wants to get that final turn done as best as he can, because you do not want to run wide. And he crosses the line, and doesn't prove he's moved up to seventh. So that was an improvement for him on that lap. That was um, a, a very improve. impressive improvement. As Mucka improves even further and jumps up into fourth and goes ahead of Eyes. But not by much though. Not by much. As I see Rossos coming back out on an out lap. He is still on a set of supers, so I'm not 100% sure what his strategy really is. Because uh, he's on the cusp of potentially even being knocked out. Still a couple of, couple of drivers that are in that bottom bit that potentially may be out. If Craig does get through, he won't be taking part in the next part of qualifying as he has, well, killed the car. Uh, same with Michael as well. Butel, he's the only one that hasn't actually set a lap time of the current runners, so that's not something he would like to do, but I believe he is on a lap at this second. As you listen to the, the V6 Mercedes engine in the back of that. Uh, I also heard some uh, gossip about uh, the about real life F1. Mercedes are actually about 950 horsepower from their engine and hybrid system together. So if they can get their shit together, they can actually get a thousand horsepower from a 1.6 liter engine. That's pretty impressive horsepower actually from 1.6. Hell, in LMP1, they were getting like over like about thousand, over a thousand horsepower from a bump. I can't remember what thing it is, but they were like four cylinders. That's what they were. They were I think they were V4s or V6s or something like that they had, and they were getting like a thousand horsepower all-wheel drive rifle enough. But you have your big boy pants on for these cars, as these are just solely rear-wheel drive. As we see Butel coming out of the final corner, is he going to improve on the lap time? Is he even setting a lap time this time round? No, it's a number of doesn't one. set anything, but hopefully he can try and get this lap put together as he won't have another one and potentially maybe setting out of qualifying in his first race for the for uh, Williams. Now he knows the significance of this is mostly everyone else well. The ones that are obviously in the pits at the moment, they're, they're out, they're not going to improve on whatever time they have set. But everyone else is still on track, can Boutel improve? We'll come back to him at the minute, we'll see where everyone else is on track. As we have Rossos, he's coming out of turn 5. We have Elite Ryan coming out of 17, I don't actually know. But we'll keep an eye on Boutel as he's come down to the fast right, uh, the left right chicane here. Doesn't want to cut it too much, doesn't want to run too wide either. Uh, keeps fairly nice. Top gear is going to break about the 100. Breaks as late as he dares, turns in beautifully, doesn't square, square up the back end. Turns in nicely, drops down a couple, drop down at second here. Comes in beautifully, hits the apex. He's going to get a nice run. Yeah, he gets a nice run out of the last corner. Hits the DRS. Is he going to improve? What is his time? As he crosses the line, it is a 1.23.8. So he oh. does get up there, but he is in that danger zone as the clock has hit zero. So everyone that is currently on a lap is. It's only Nicholas that's only on a lap. Everyone else is not. Uh, actually, scratch that. We have Frantique that's on an on a lap. Uh, as he is, ah, he's eased off that already. So let's watch Nicholas as he's the last one to set a lap. As he's coming around the third to last corner, 
Gets a little bit wide, touches that gra gravel, turns into second to last corner. Is he going to improve? Is he going to put oh, Craig in a potential? Oh, he's missed the oh. entrance. Well, uh, that's not a thing you want to see a driver make. Oh, and he's spun it. Oh, no. AI, uh, not, AI's not exactly 100% sure what to do, but um, so yeah, there you have now it. having a hissy fit. Um, I yes, believe so. that is uh, Q1 done. So, there you go. Uh, the ones that we're losing out of this one is Craig Senna, Nicholas, BR Mr. Michaels, and Pirate, Mr. Pirate Pants. They're all out at the end of Q1. Uh, but there's some fairly decent times. First to 15th was only separated by 1.1 seconds. So, missing out this could be a very interesting... Even a this could be a fit. Oh... This is going to be an insane qualifying session. Let us guys, let us guys know in uh, the chat below if what you think of the qualifying so far. As we move on to Q2, do you expect to see the same, Mark? I expect to see it very close. If they can be that close in Q1, I'm expecting very similar things in Q2. It, the only difference is it might be uh, maybe a little bit more spreaded. Because like they're they're trying to conserve their tires because it will be the ones they start on, but still would hope to see it that close. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite good. Do you have any predictions for pole, or is it too close to call? I think it's it's. I think it might be George, but it will be very close. Yeah, he's going to have a tough challenge from the likes of Frantic, Floodlines, and. Uh, let, Mucka and potentially if he can get his head in the game, Brutel. Let's see some of these drivers already coming out. We see the first driver out is uh, Russell Shack in the Sauber. Uh, first man out of the pits. He's on a set of super softs. Why are my details not working? Okay, there we go. So he should be coming out. Now we have quite a few people. A um, couple of people are actually doing the super soft strategy. Papa Fairy, Krog, and Frantique are all coming out on Super Softs. So it's an interesting one. Is Frantique going to go Super Softs, then Ultras, if he's going to do the one stop? Or is he definitely going to keep it to Ultras, then Supers? I think he's going to see what he can do on the Supers. And then. Yeah, get a banker in, then. At the start, just wait I think it out, he'll drag them out. Yeah, I think, yeah, and then I think from the start of the race, he'll drag them out as long as he can. Because if he can get those supers to last a, as long as he seems to be doing in practice, he can do the one-stop on just the supers and ultras, like I said earlier. So, yeah. Yeah, all, all, to, all to wait for when we get to the race. But it is now time to get into the battle for the top 10. Who can get in there as we see Callum? Uh, or so Shaq, that is. He is going to start the lap. That is potentially going to set the benchmark. So, let's come down the Joan Stray, I believe this is called now. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Don't, I'm not Mr. Michael. Don't have all the information of each track. He, he's he's the guru. He knows what shit is. But we will hope to hopefully try and see some more tight action. Even tomorrow, don't forget. You've got me. You've got me and uh, HLG in our new teams with new drivers. Hopefully, uh, different cars as well, completely. So hopefully we can actually try and get some decent points for our respective teams, uh, myself and the Williams as well. So hopefully, hopefully we can get something done with that and try and get some sort of sort of start going. Hopefully it's a clean race tomorrow. Hopefully every race is clean because we always love a clean race. Clean races are always the best thing to have in a game like this. But the game is also broken, yeah, especially. so no promises. Yeah, this game. Oh, Callum, what have you done? He's plonked oh, in a barrier and will. he's gone. Oh, he's thrown it away. He's tried too hard and just thrown it away there. So we're seeing some of the big but, names in this, this division throw away their chances in this race. Yeah. I think I think the question is really now is are we going to lose any more of the big names? Hmm, that's the question. As Papa Fairy's coming out the second to last corner, so he's going to be the one that's setting the benchmark. 
if he's not validated his lap time. So he comes out the final corner, he's going to come down to start straight. Is he going to get a decent time in? He does a 24-2, so that should be... Oh, Master Krog jumps in there with a 24-4. Ice Best, 22-8. Frantique's not that far behind. So Frantique's the fastest out of the soft tire runners by over a second. That's a huge margin. That's a very big margin. Patel slots in at fourth. Finlay slots in at second. So now is the question, are those teams quick enough to stay in the top ten or are they just going to tumble down even further? Boots Garden only gets into third place, surprisingly. Yeah, he obviously didn't probably have the lap he was wanting at that time. As we see Loki, he's coming across the line and jumps into fourth. Uh, where's Floodlines? I think he's on an outlap. Matty GB's coming around the final corner. What's he going to set in his opening gambit? As he's going to come across the line. Is he going to go top? He goes fifth. So, Floodlines, where's he going to go? As he comes down. Oh, with the DRS open. Across the line. And... Didn't post the time. Okay. That makes me feel like a dumb. But... <laughs> that may have been a mistake on his count or on his part, so... We unfortunately don't know. But unfortunately have lost Calm, which which isn't something you want to see. You want to see everyone qualify, but it's one of those things that does happen and unfortunately it has happened. Sucks to be him, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just hope we don't there you do go. It tomorrow. The gaps between the gaps between the leaders point six 0 0.065 a second, not even a tenth between Eyes and Finlay there. Uh, George yeah. Gunn, not that far behind. Same with Loki, not that far behind George. Uh, so it's definitely very tight. So it's all going to be down to who can get that lap in down the bottom of the lit between the like, 11th top 10 lit area. So from like, uh, Master Krog down to Mucka, if they all have a lap time set, there could be thousands, hundreds of a second separating each position. I think for you to be definitely safe at this point, you're going to be looking for the perfect lap. Yeah, if you want to be safe, hey, let's bring up the lap times. Where does Floodlines go? He goes top with a 22 eight, six thousands of a second ahead of eyes the best. Holy cow, that's a, that's a spicy meatball. Uh, but yeah, very, very tight. Only six thousandths of a second in it. This is... This is it's impressive just, stuff. I'm just bewildered at how well these guys are outperforming each other. They're just going lap after lap. Just putting in time after time. I think, see, if you want a top 10 show, you need to be in a 23. You need to be in a 20... I'm going to say a 23-5 and you're, sa you're safe. I, I make a bold I, statement. I there. think it's going to be quicker than that. I think you're going to have to be doing 23 ones. To be honest with you, there are people out there that can definitely improve, like Butel, Frantique, Krog, and Marker, they're all around that Ryan. midway mark. Let me see. Do we have anybody improving on lap times? I'm not 100% sure. I think people will just be coming in and trying to look judge what people are doing. Uh, Master Krog's still on a set of supers. Everyone else is on uh, ultras. Interesting. So people probably strapping on a new set of ultras just in case they do have to go back out at the last minute. And as you say that, two guys have just came out of the pits. That was one of the Williams cars and I believe Toro Rosso. So who was that? Was that Fran Yep, Frantique and Botel coming out one by one. So they're definitely looking to improve on their time. As we have Elite Ryan currently going on a flying lap. So far looks very clean and tidy. No real major mistakes. Keeping it within the track limits. Yes, yeah, Muck has come around to finish his lap. And... Don't set one, okay. Uh, as we back to Elite uh, Ryan. The lap. Mm, yes, uh, Elite Ryan come down into this braking zone. Oh, very nice apex is there. That was very beautiful through that corner as he's now coming up to the fast left right chicane. 
As you were saying, oh, Pat has accidentally left the session. I'm not sure if that was due to something else. Oh, that was a nice, nice left right there for uh, Elite Ryan. Kept in seventh, surprisingly. Not many people can go essentially flat out around here. It takes a yeah, elite, special kind of something to, to keep that pinned. Together. As he's coming into the final corner, into fourth, up into fifth before he's even exiting that corner. Yeah, and across the line, what's he going to set for? His lap, it's a 1.23.0, so he's putting himself up there. So he's definitely doing what he can. Krog has went on to another set of uh, ultras. Mucka has spun the car, uh, so that's not going to do him any good. But at the moment, Floodline still holding it six thousandths per second ahead of uh, Eyes the Best. Can can he improve if he needs to come out? I don't think any of these guys that are in the top three are going to come out. They're not really under fire at all. I don't think we're going to see any of the top six at this point come back out. Well, can Aware Giant put anything on it as he's coming around the final turn? Opens up the DRS. Climbing up the gears, and he is going to cross the line, and he slots it to a 24-4, so he's not really made much of an improvement. But Master Krog, intent, he's he's the target man for everyone, like for the likes of Trek, Purple Fairy, as he comes across the line, uh, start a lap, Trek is on a lap, uh, Muck is in the pits with four and a half minutes to go. Uh, so he must be strapped on another set of tires and then he's going to go back out as Finley's retired. So he's definitely he's thinking he's safe. But the main ones that you need to really worry about are li the likes of Frantique. As I say that, he puts it up into third. Mm, potentially Finley, if he doesn't keep that lap time, people improve, he may be at risk. But I do like this little gap between Elite Ryan uh, George Garton to Lucky, they're separated by nothing. Separated by nothing. Yeah, there's very little separating those three. I think at this point, if you're further back Mucka in the field, I think at this yeah, point, if you're further Mucka back in the field, you can uh, jump all three of them if you jump one of them. So. Yep. So if anyone can actually improve, may even be my GP may even be Butel not having the best of starts to his his day to day I think at this point Butel's cruising round on his ultras oh. not taking too much life out of them as, watching to see uh, if he needs to as uh, Trex has jumped up into 8th so he's not exactly entirely safe Krog is he going to come out I'm not sure he's in 11th does he want to take the risk of coming out, or does he want to attempt his alternate strategy? I don't think 11th is a bad place to start, to be honest. I think if you can't get into sort of like the, maybe like top five people on the grid, maybe 11th is probably a good shout. You get fresh tyres, you can play the strategy as you wish to play the strategy. Uh, so, even if he but doesn't But the only you're out, right in the place. mid pack where anything can happen. Uh, yeah, it's it's risk versus reward at this point, I think. As Matty's coming is around the final Krog corner. going to come out? Nope, but George Garton is definitely coming out. He feels he's not safe enough in that position. As the Red Bull are getting one of their drivers out. I'm not sure who that was. That may have been Eyes, I'm not 100% sure. No, Eyes is in the Sauber, what am I talking about? Uh, so, is Butel, oh, Butel's retired. He's in 10th, so if Krog does come out, and I believe he may be just about to, if Krog does come out, uh, then he has a chance. But with a minute 40, 45 on the clock, he's cutting it fine. I think he would have to have been out by now, wouldn't he, to come round and get a lap in? Yeah, he'd be pushing it, he'd be pushing it, but he's not going to get a lap in now as it's far too close to the time. Eyes is retired from the session. Just want to make sure these aren't, man. Uh, 
George Garton's on a lap. Uh, Lucky's going out on a lap. Uh, so I'm afraid to say it, Krog. You're gone, and so is Elite Giant. Uh, sorry, we're Giant. Uh, Mucka and Rosso, uh, Mucka and uh, Pugvera, they can both uh, jump into the top 10 and put Botel and Mighty GB out. But Mighty GB is currently going to start a lap. Oh, was to say that he actually finishes one. He's moved up into fifth, so it's very close. Botel could get knocked out here. Mucka goes into seventh, so Botel is out. Botel will be out at the end of this session. My GB's retired. Uh, George Garton, where are you going to put it? Oh, he's starting a lap. Look, he's coming out the final corner. He's going to start his lap as well. Uh, interestingly enough, the only person that can really push anyone down now is Purple Fairy. So the only one in real threat is Trex at this point. So no one else really needs to set a lap other than Purple Fairy. Yeah. If Pepper Fairy can get that lap together, he can. Uh, he can obviously put it right amongst, put it, put the cat right amongst the pigeons. Got one more attempt at this now. He's gonna go through the first two couple of corners. Very nice, very stable as well. That's what we like to see as he goes into seventh, eighth. He's gonna come down into the breaking zone. He's gonna want to clip that apex. Oh, he clips it beautifully. So he's gonna change up, lift off. There's no real breaking round here. Runs it a tad wide. Probably loses a little bit of time there, but you get the next bit very beautifully hitting uh, the curves as he should. This is Apex in fourth, gets powered down. There's a little bit of traction, but enough, not enough really to cause him any issues. Uh, then to the next breaking zone, into third. Interestingly enough, I would have kept it into fourth round there personally. Uh, but he doesn't seem to be losing too much time. He does climb it into eighth Garden. here. George Garden's now coming across the line. He has put it on top again. Wow. Takes four tenths of a second out of Floodline, so he was leading that the whole way. Uh, as we'll watch the rest of Purple Fairy's lap as he's coming around the third to last corner. He's doing it very well. He's keeping it in fifth. Doesn't want to get too right to run on that gravel. That gravel will suck you right in if you get too close. Gets the car turned in nicely. Comes out around the final tricky right hander. On to the final straight. Opens DRS. Is he going to jump up any further? No. Uh, yes, he does. He goes into fifth. Yes, he does. He's jump up into fifth. What a lap. He's put out Trex and he's put out Brutel, Krog. Oh, we're giants, unfortunately, are going to be with us and Rossos as well. So, there you have it so far. There's your top ten so far. It's, this is going to be interesting. Mucka will need to retire his car, though. But yeah, we there we go, George Garton. Here. But very, your very pole close center. all the way through that qualifying. He's yeah, three tenths of a second, then no, six tenths. It's just so tight. Top eight less than... Top ten less than half a second. Essentially, just over uh, half a second between first to tenth. Interestingly enough as well, no one in the top ten... Qualified on the super softs, so everyone in top tens on the no. ultras. You could see very similar strategies from these top ten drivers. Yeah, potentially. So there you have it, George again. Top the time sheets right at the end. Question is, can he take that form into the last race, uh, the last part of qualifying here to set the top ten of the grid? So these drivers now will just be thinking, chill, let's do this, we have this, are we going to get the top, are we going to get podium, are we going to get pole, who knows as we adventure into the final part of qualifying here, the top 10 shootout, the most, the best, awesomest thing in F1, apart from the racing that is as well, is the top 10 shootout. With this new, with the new drivers and all that, it's going to be, you wouldn't be able to predict it, you can't predict it. No, you, you, you can can't. say who may get it, but you can't write it. This this right here is going to be unwritable. As you know, 12 minutes for this qualifying session, so it's going to be intense. The top 10, hopefully none of them make any mistakes. Unfortunately, what happened to Rossos, he just obviously spun the car and lost the back end. But 
it's going to be very intense seeing what these drivers can produce. We've already seen some very, very quick times. We may, if George can put it together, we could potentially see a 21. We could potentially um, see a 21, that's very that'll true. Be interesting. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting as well. Who's going to be the first one to come out? Everyone's probably looking around, and I believe that may be a Toro Rosso that's coming out. It is. Uh, a Haas is coming out as well, by the looks of it. No, it's a McLaren. Yeah, the McLaren. Uh, so, who's the first one to come out? I think Frantique was the first one to come out behind floodlines, as the rest of the paddock's getting crazy. Let's see, Loki's coming out. Papa Ferry probably coming out. Yeah, let's see. So, Frantique was the first one to come out, so he'll be the benchmark everyone will be looking to see at the moment. Yeah, floodlines was the next one. I's best followed him out as well. Yeah, everyone's coming out now. It's gonna start to get crazy but let's see what these drivers will be doing will they go 21s will they be a low 22s only one way to find out now so you know i think potentially floodlines may take it if he can push george if not george has got in the bag for qualifying uh, i think it's gonna take flood putting the perfect lap in uh, but then again, it's going to be the same from George. It's, it's very close up front. George isn't taking this by a hell of a lot at the moment. It is no, maybe showed his card. Yeah, maybe in the session. Hey, we have 29 laps ahead of us. And it should be an interesting 29 laps as we see Frantique coming to start his flying lap. As essentially everyone apart from George and Papa Ferry. Oh. Sold everyone the dummy there. Maybe he's doing what I think he's going to do. He's going to wait till the end. Just get some heat into those tires and just wait. Mm, it's an interesting strategy there from Frantique, which means that if I'm not mistaken, Floodlines would be the first one to set the benchmark. Yeah. So, Floodlines and the McLaren is going to be your benchmark at the moment. If he doesn't cock up the lap, he'll be the one everyone will be watching see where he's going fastest where he's not so shame we can't get the telemetry as well because we'd like to see who's setting the fastest sector times as he says the 27 4 in the first sector uh, i'm not really sure what frantique is exactly doing i think he's just going to wait until everyone else has set a lap then come out i think the last three minutes he'll set his lap then we'll be like wow what lap I mean, I have, I don't know if he used all of his tyres up other than one set. Because um, normally people would save, or well, at least attempt to save two sets of tyres for this qualifying. Hence why people go out so early into the qualifying. But uh, if he's only saved one set of tyres, he could have to wait and do that one run to try and get that pole position. Yeah, definitely. As you see, a floodline's coming out the final corner. What's he going to set as he comes to the lane? It's a 22.9. Not the best, as I's the best set of 22.3. So it's going to be nip and tuck 22.24.3. So Finley's not had the best lap. Matty's not really had the best lap. Who else is still with us? Lucky has gone into third with a 23.1. Elite Ryan's coming across the lane. He shoots to. Nowhere he's not set a decent enough lap. Mucka's on track as well. I think he's on a flying lap. So we'll see where he can get to. Uh, interesting enough, Frantique's oh. already coming back out. Mucka. I had a moment in the chicane there. Yeah, Mucka does the right thing, keeps it out of the way. Doesn't want to let obviously a driver get taken out by him coming back on the track so he keeps it away so Frantique it's going to be interesting did he keep a set of tyres from qualifying already or has he taken a worn set out to use in qualifying to, to just put something there no, it's going to be hard to say yeah it's very hard to say as Frantique's going to come across the line to start his flying lap with a 5 minute lap time crazy but everyone, apart from George Garden, is the only person that's not put a lap time on the board or has went out on track. As we see, Mucka setting a 142, but that was obviously with his mistake. 
Our fair is also coming out on the lap as Matty GB's still going around. Top five, apart from Matty GB, are all in the pits. As uh, Finlay, I believe, just set another lap. Uh, or maybe an elite. Ryan, has he sent it up into second place with the 22 9, so he's not that far ahead of Matty GB. But there is a big bridged gap to try and get to first, which is eyes the best at this moment. George Garton and Frantique and Purple Fairy are to set laps. But Frantique and Purple Fairy are together. There's Purple Fairy in the background there, as you can see. He's the one that's chasing him down. You can just see Frantique there in the distance. As Frantique looks to have had a fairly clean lap. Does run a little bit wide there. Yeah, didn't get the turn in he really wanted for that last, second last turn, well, third last turn, I should say. As he comes out, he's not got that car planted. He is understeering a little tad. But uh, he comes across the line and sets a 122.4, so he's definitely up there. He's got that pace. As Puff Ferry's coming in, sounds yes. quite fast. Uh, George Garden looks like he's about to come out. Muck is coming in. So, Frantique's only Wait, a tenth of the ice the best time, and he did seem to have a couple of uh, little mistakes there, so he's definitely got that time in him if he's got another set of tyres, or maybe another run in this set of tyres if needs be. Mm, potentially. It's all F's, butts, and coconuts right now, but we only have two people that haven't set a lap time. That's Pearl Fair and George Garden. I believe George is going to leave it to essentially the last second. Yeah, I think he might only have one set of tyres left. He think he, I think he's had to push more than he's wanted to in these last couple of sessions. He's not really had that in the last season, but uh, this season he's definitely being pushed. So, it's very interesting up front. Yeah, as we see, Floodlines is the only one that's went back out on another outlap. Probably slapped on a new set of boots and went... Fuck it, why not? Let's do this. He's come out quite early compared to the others, though. He's, yeah, he's I was thinking that when I seen the, when, it, when I seen the car coming out the pits, I was like, he's a fair bit early. You'd expect Frantique to pit now, and he'll be. Oh, he's going on again. Okay. I'm not sure what exactly he's planning on doing with three and a three and a quarter three and three quarter minutes left. Uh, Someone else is coming out quite early. That's one of the Hassies. That may be as both the Mercedes are coming out. So George is stepping out on the track now. My GB's came out. So both the Mercedes are lined, staring behind each other. For the lines, he's now lining himself up to start a lap. Yeah, the only issue he's got is he's got to deal with all of these drivers ahead of him. But they should be able to just by the and move out of the way when it comes to it. As he's going to come down into the braking for the first corner, leaves it in fifth, runs it a little bit wide onto that first turning, which brings it quite tight into the second. With his DRS now open, he doesn't take it into eighth. Some people might find taking it into eighth there is a better idea, but he leaves it into seventh as he takes fourth round here. Hitting those, uh, those curbs nicely there, taking what I would say is the ideal line. He uses a little bit of traction through there. It seems like a couple of drivers are losing some traction through that corner. It's a very tricky corner yeah, to get I've right. That. Yeah, I've noticed that a couple of times that a couple of drivers are just bringing traction a little bit too easy out there. Probably just trying to jump on the throttle a little bit. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, you break into it, but once you get that turn in, it's quite quick. So it's just finding that ideal point of getting the uh, power down. Matt GB's come across the line now to set another lap. Probably uh, didn't like that one much, but as we have quite a few people. Bit. George Garner's on a lap, never forget. He is currently just about to start his first lap in this session with a minute 55, so he's only going to get two laps. So two bases at the cherry, and hopefully they're going to work for him as he's okay. going to start his lap now. Lines and it goes top, 22-3. Still not that far ahead of... Uh, still just not that, that far ahead of Ice. Uh, who else, who's on a lap that's coming to finish theirs? Uh, 
Look, he's on an outlap. Finley's on an outlap. Mucker's kind of held up there by a back mark. I'm not sure who that was. Maybe flood line. Oh, I think Elite Ryan was on lap. He does get a little bit of a spook from some of the front other cars. Uh, as he seems to have composed himself after that little bit of a fright. Keeping the car nice and planted uh, on the track. So, haven't really lost too much time, I don't believe. So, see, George Garton coming up to the end of his lap with his teammate in hot pursuit of him, but he's not really that far to do anything about it. As he's coming around the second last corner now, gets the apex nicely. Keep the crowd cheering on as he comes out, gets it perfectly coming out of the final turn, has the DRS, climbs up the gears to 7th, going into 8th gear, and he only goes 2nd, he goes 2nd, has he got anything left to tank? No, he no. doesn't, he's not going to get pulled, he's not going to get pulled this time, so oh. it was only half a half a tenth in it, so floodlines, is he going to improve on his time? No, he does not, but he has an extra lap in the bag. This could mean that Ice has retired the car. previous GP2 runner uh, gets pulled in F1. Yeah. Who'd have thunk that? That's probably fair across the line. Doesn't improve. Any of these drivers for the back. Lucky, he's on a lap. Is he going to improve on his? No, he doesn't. Is Phil and Xbox Live going to improve on his lap? As he's out the final turn. He comes across the line and doesn't improve. Hey, he's coming by the final couple of corners as well. He's going to be looking to improve his lap. Has he done enough though? He opens the DRS, climbs through the gears. As he comes across the line. Ah, he jumps up into third. Enough. Does put him into first, but it's not enough to, to get him into the pole position. Uh, I think the last person is Mucker. He's also coming through the last Elite couple Rain's of little bits. Lap. Yeah, so Mucka is coming around to find a turn. What is he going to say? Is he going to go faster than anyone ahead of him? Nope, he no. does not. No. Elite Ryan, does is he going to improve? Me. No. Well, there you get it. There you have it, I should say. Uh, Floodlines on top with the 122.3. Just snatched it from George Garner, who was pushing, probably made a little bit of a mistake that just lost him that half a tent. Uh, only three hundredths of a second ahead of Matty GB in third, so Matty put in a solid lap to get that. Again, one thousandth of a second ahead of I's the best. That is tight for the third place. Frantique in his debut as well gets uh, gets into uh, fifth. Look, excuse me, Lucky twelve ten gets sixth. Elite Ryan gets seventh. Not bad. Uh, Finley on Xbox Live gets 8th, Mucka gets 9th, and Pearl Fair unfortunately didn't manage to set a lap, but he starts in 10th. So, oh. predictions for the race. Do you think Frantique could pull off that one stop? Ah, uh, I, I don't know. It, I think it's going to be tough. I think he needed to start on the super stops for that that he could push those as far as he could and then he knows what he's got to do on his ultras. Now he's got to do it the other way round. I think it's a little bit more risky. Uh, so I think you might see him actually do two stop rather than the one stop. However, you will have some of the people starting outside the top 10 doing the one stop, I think. So, still more to play for. Yeah, definitely. Everything's to play for as we're going to get into the first round of the season first race of the season and we can see what what it's going to be like with all of these drivers a packed grid full grid essentially here tonight is anyone well who it's not anyone who is going to walk away with the first one of the season is it going to be one of the new boys is it going to be floodlines is it going to be frantique could it be george garden starting third remember he's starting no sorry starting second he is he's got my gb right up his wheel with eyes the best, essentially the exact same lap times together there, uh, only uh, probably fractions between them. Uh, yeah, so there you go, floodlines. I believe we're st are we still doing pole position gets uh, a point 
or we're not uh, doing that anymore? I don't think it's a point, sure. uh, but basically everything's now worked on budgets for those that haven't seen. So I think it's a an extra bit of money towards the team. Mm. Is what it is essentially now. So, yeah, uh, I believe he will earn that for his team. And I think his team will be happy with that. Yeah. It's going to be exciting as these guys are going to get their strategy sorted out now and get their heads into the game as it's race time here. As the rules are, you're not allowed to ride up until everyone else is officially ready. Uh, whoever gets that may be awarded a penalty. We'll keep an eye on the left and see who that was. But doesn't look like anyone's riding up too early, so they're all being behaved. They obviously don't want any penalties or any infringements what may come in the future. Uh, I think most of these drivers understand the rule now, though. That a lot of them have been in the league for at least a season now, or, or you know, yeah. understand or the rules and rules. So, yeah, just just a case of waiting for uh, the call to be made by uh, Michael for people to ready up. Uh, but while we're waiting on that, yeah. uh, what are your predictions for the race? I know it's going to be a tough one to call, but what are your predictions? I th I think it's just too close to call. I think I think f it's either going to be George or Flood. I don't think Frantique's got that in him to stretch that Ultra Soft out as much as he can. We've seen George do it very well at uh, Singapore last season. He stretched out much much more than anyone else managed. He went further out in the race and proved those ultra softs can be used very effectively. But uh, I'm not sure. Michael may even surprise us and get some decent places further up from starting further starting from last actually. As Nicholas has been the first to ready up. Craig's just went in there to check. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody was ready, so we would need to get confirmation from Michael on that uh, one. Uh, I, th I think he'll be okay. I think there was a, a fair amount of time waited, but uh, we will get confirmation for that at the end. So, as these drivers are getting ready now, and I will say hi to the 10 people that are watching us. Welcome. Ten. Enjoy That's the race the as we go to five red lights for the start of the Australian Grand Prix and round th this season three is a go here at Melbourne as it's a great start from Frantique. Uh, sorry, from uh, George Garton, I should say there, as you can see him there. As one of the Hassies has come through the middle, and George Garton gets the place uh, further back. Who are we going to see what's happened further back? As there's a yellow flag, something's happened further back, but everyone looks to be clean. They're back contact, seeing something fly up the back. But George Garton is your leader currently at the moment. As someone, whoa, what, what's happened back there? There was, there was a Red Bull going around. There's been carnage. Two Red Bulls are around. Oh, it's not went well. It's not went well. First two corners were good, but something's happened further back with one of the uh, the uh, Red Bulls. Both of them didn't get the best of starts from what I could see further back. But I would like to point out, Frantique has made it up into second place after all of this. Yes, he has. Toro Rosso driver, there he is in second place. He's got two seconds to make on uh, George Garton, who's got a cracking start. He is gone. He's just shot off like a rocket. But can Frantique close that gap down? It's anyone's guess as looking further behind eyes the best stayed in third muck has managed to get up into fourth from where he started not being exactly the best of races so far uh, at the moment not being the best of starts not the worst we've seen not the worst i'll give them that they managed to keep that clean they managed to have relatively issue three but a little bit of contact at the back but hopefully they're all sorting themselves out now let's have to see what tires are they on at the moment some people have went for softs. Oh, okay. Pirate Pants, Nicholas, Rossos, Boutel, uh, those on Michael, the softs, Craig, and a, we're, Yeah, those on the softs will yeah. be looking to do the one stop. Most likely. A uh, couple of people, Krog and Trex, are on the supers. The four people at uh, the bottom from Rossos, Shaq, all the way down, have all come into the pits. Nose change there for Trex. He's been held. Nose change for Rossos. Lucky is out and gone. Rossos is down. He's not away. He's waiting for someone to move. Matty's had a bit of a collision as well. He's moved on to the softs. So, a couple of people are making their stops at the moment. But at the moment, your leader is George Garn, who's got a two and a half. Only Ram making a move on Finley. 
Oh, and he makes it stick. Very beautiful move, but Floodlines is going to go around the outside of both of them. Oh, oh what a move, Floodlines. You can see where Giant's got a box seat view to this. He's going to try and make it four car battle there for for uh, sixth place there. Just try and get on the back of Finley for Xbox Live. And Mucka's He's got around the Eyes the Best, but Eyes the Best is coming back. What's happening to Eyes the Best? He's fallen down. He's been overtaken by Krog and Mucka. Both in the space of a couple of corners, so we already have a bit of a train as he has a bit of damage, so he's coming into the pits rather early. But Master Krog is up the back of Mucka. Is he going to try and go? He's just shown him that he's there. Closes up a little bit. Let's look further down. Not many places have been changed, but Le Ryan's made a decent start. Craig and Michael are into the points and battling each other. They're not going to give each other uh, any any sort of any sort of uh, space. They're just going to battle it hard. Is yeah, it's not going to be easy for Michael to get around Craig. Craig is quite strong, I would say, on this track. I wouldn't say it's his strongest, but he's quite a strong driver around here. As he's trying to close up to the back, potentially maybe using a bit of a rich mix to try and close up, but maybe not too early. But as we go further back up again, there's this little train that's still happening. Elite Ryan is just ahead of Floodlines. Uh, sorry, if Elite Ryan's just ahead of Finley and Xbox Live, who's just ahead of Floodlines. As we go back to the broadcasting view, which is quite a nice view, I must add. Uh, as we look further back, the Ferrari is getting held up there as Craig is defending very hard for Michael. Oh, bit of argy barge between them. Kate to clean, just forced him a little bit onto the grass, but wasn't malicious in any way. Just a bit of aggressive driving, that's all. But this is going to be a fierce battle between these two. I believe there was a position swap ahead. Uh, uh, Krog's having a bit of a battle one. here with Maka. Maka's going to the inside to defend into the first corner. Krog thinks better Krog trying, trying to take right the right around the outside there. there. He knows he's on a different strategy. But Krog will have DRS again, so he's got a second bait at the cherry. Come down this back straight. As Michael has got round Craig Senna. Uh, Craig Senna. The inside, there's a little bit of contact between the Merc and the Ferrari. Well, yeah, there's still side a bit of contact side. between. They, they are not giving each other a bit of leeway here at all, but this is giving a chance for Floodlines to come into the mix with his uh, little uh, train of cars. Keep that. Yeah, Krog's managed to make that place. And it is now a four car, five car train now for third place. Uh, maybe a six car, because I believe a weird giant is trying to get still at the back of this train. So we have a six car train here. <laughs> this is incredible. This is Six insane. cars for third place. Luke Ryan's having a look and at the And who says this can't be decent racing? Oh, has Krog just clipped that inside barrier a bit too much? And it's Craig McCropper with a three second penalty. We'll keep an eye Lines on them, but we'll be giving them it out. He's going to look for the cut back. Uh, on inside. quite Try. the drive. This puts Elite Ryan into yeah. prime position to look at the place. Yeah, but Mucka's going to be a bit vulnerable here. He's not close to Massa Krog, but he has all of those angry cars. He may have picked up DRS as he did so, but he is just going to be sitting a, a sitting duck as Floodlines is closing back up and rather quickly, I must add. He's getting on the back end, but got away with it. On the second DRS straight, is he going to get a bit closer? No, as Craig Senna's coming out of the bits, he may have a bit of frumming damage. He's locked up there, he's turned down rather early on. Ryan had a Elite look at Floodlines, right very big dive. This is putting on a pressure from Finley now from that little bit of a dive there. These guys are all pushing very hard to make these positions. They can see that there's an opportunity here. As uh, Ross yes. manages to set the fastest lap. Yes, he does. As we see, Floodlines is closing down on the back of Mucka there. He's really putting Mucka under immense pressure as George Gardens just came across with a three second penalty. That may be crucial in the end of grand scheme of things of this race. As we still have. We're only lap, five laps into this, and we already have battles up and down this grid. Uh, we've got a battle between Mucka. Oh, he touched the grass there. He's not going to get the traction he really needed out there. Had a very bad drive. Uh, this is sweet red, as and is elite three wide. Three, three wide. wide. What is this madness? Mucka had to keep himself on edge, and Flood had to back out of that. He had no angle on the outside there to try and make anything work. He tried to cut back, didn't work. Unfortunately for him. 
Uh, Mucker still keeps the spot, but has lost all that time to uh, Krog. So Krog's clear off ahead. So this is a battle for fourth place now. As we see, more cars are just trying to get involved in this. Mucker's trying as much as he can to keep Ryan himself ahead the there. Yes, we can see that. Don't need to bring up every second. Uh, Floodlines is just Mucker? trying... Oh, so close between these two. As we see, Floodlines is trying to get back past Elite Ryan. He's not going to give him any inch. Not going to give him anything. As we look to try and see something come up there. Uh, no, nothing's happening at the moment. Here's, here's an interesting so it's just this while little these are back and forth battling Michael is actually catching the back of them oh yeah he's only you can just see the back of where giant so he's not that far behind them this is a very impressive so start there you go. there's Michael. Michael in the background there oh flood say, is having a look at the outside is he going to get the Renault Renault keeps the spot he's that he's Oh, he's got the inside. He's going to try something around here. Ooh. Oh, there's contact. Oh, oh, as around goes Elite Ryan, I think there may have been a slight nudge as they were trying to come in there. Uh, I think there's a slight nudge between between them, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going to uh, record Let's that from my there. point of view just as some evidence. I think that was just more of a racing incident than it was anything, but uh, we'll continue on. Yeah, as Boutel and Michaels are now into the points, 8th and 9th respectively, after having horrendous, and I mean horrendous, qualifying. As we see, we're giant still getting chased down there by by uh, Michael, uh, but still has a bit of a gap between him and Finlay, but not much seemed there. Flood has got a bit of a gap between him and Mocha and him and Finlay respectively between the pair of them. Uh, we're probably going to be in that little stagnant period where not much will really be happening at this moment, but hopefully that should be picking up very shortly as people will be making their first round of pit stops, I think, very shortly. Most people will be going for the two stop, uh, but the guys that are currently on the softs, they will be making the one stop as Frantique is actually starting to close down that gap on uh, George as he can just see George in front of him, so he's not letting George Garrett get away. They'll be using him as a reference as George Garn is making the pit stop and that is does release hit? Frantique. So Frantique will be your leader as they come across the line now. Can he make his one-stop strategy work? That is going to be the big question as George Garn goes on to Supersoft. Krogs in third and will overtake George. Same with Mucka. And yeah, okay. everyone apart from Finley's jumped into the pits. So he'll be probably going on to set of supers as George has been released. Is he going to get ahead of Butel? Is Butel going to get around outside of him? Two. Oh, Butel, Butel gets, gets it. it. But George is on fresher, faster rubber and potentially may get him back. Oh, Michaels is now so on now the there's back a battle of the between the yeah. yeah, there's a bit of bring that up as well. Battle between them. Who's going to come out on top? Is Michael going to try and close down a little bit on the giant? As we see Mako there just getting ever so closer, ever so closer. Under brakes just gets a fraction closer, a fraction closer. Beautiful shot at the back of that McLaren. As Mako's didn't get the traction he's really needing now with that, uh, that left hand, the tight left hander. But we'll continue on. Is we going to, are we going to see Frantique uh, getting into some sort of battle uh, with George, if he pits now, is he going to? No, he's continuing on. So he has one stop strategy, is going to attempt. Well, it's going to be attempted as where Giant has been overtaken by Michael. So he's managed to get that done under the brakes. So is Battelle going to be getting onto the back of him? He's a fair ways away from where Giant. It does look like a where Giant lost a bit of time from that uh, little bit of a battle with Michael there, though. So. Yeah, as we see Trex looking up the back of Lukey for 12th place, is he going to get it? No, but they both locked up a little bit, but not that much. Lukey's keeping the position ahead of the Williams driver. In the oh, and Nicholas is out. Oh, where did that happen? Oh, he's lost that big time at 
the uh, left right chicane further round to the lap. But Trex has got the DRS on Loki and that should be an easy done deal down the inside. Yeah, that was done easily. Down on the brakes. Threw into 12th place, which Trex in the Williams. And we'll have DRS for the next straight. As we look further up, as Floodline's going to be on the back of Mucka this time. Looks to be that way the now. As Floodlines is closing in a little bit further and further and further. Uh, Trex has fell down the... Has just tumbled down. What's happened to him? Is he... Oh, he must have went onto the grass because you can see the uh, bit gravel. So he must have broke himself. As we look further down. Uh, who are we looking to see now? There's Frantique who's still... Still plowing along. He's got a fair distance between them. Let's see. What's the gap? leader. He's got George dropped down a place game. from Finlay. Yeah, Ford lines in the pits. What's he going to go into? Is he going to go into softs? Supers? Yeah, he's going to go into supers. Like supers. So it looks like he's going to be going for the two-stop strategy. Yeah. But the question is, where is Master Krog going to fit into this? Is he going to try and do the one-stop as well with Frantique? But where's the gap? The gap between the gap between the leader and George Garner is 38 seconds. So Frantique could pit now and still come out ahead. He'd be just, I think, in front of or just behind them that you have there between George Garner dropping like a stone. What is happening? Oh, oh he's no, no. He's driving the car himself at the moment. Yeah, he's lost a bit of front wing, so he's not exactly been it's not exactly been the way he would have wanted to start the f the first race of the season. Uh, but hopefully he can come back and try and get those places back as Rossos has now moved up into tenth after his horrendous qualifying as well. That wasn't the best qualifying that he had either, but we hope to see a bit more of it. Well, a bit more of him hopefully coming through the race. Uh, let's get back to the times that we have. So your gap between Frantique and Krog as they have started lap 11 is 7 seconds. It was a little bit further than that, but Krog has been bringing that down ever so slightly, ever so recently. As we do see a battle between Michaels and Mucka, Michaels is coming up to the back of Mucka. Uh, Lessie, who's still also a little bit of a, Looks like there could be a little bit of a tussle as well between Ag the Best and Flood Lines, very, uh, flood lines should I say, very soon. So, uh... Yeah, well, the top six haven't made a pit stop, so from Frantique to Boutel haven't made any pit stops at all. So, this is going to be interesting to see how well this is going to be, as Michaels is the one that's got up the most positions, 14 positions he's gained from the start of the race. It's very impressive from him so Incredible. far, started right at the back. Yeah, started last and managed to make his way all the way up. Oh, oh that's Michael. a bit of a corner cut there from Michael. Michael, that was a bit naughty. Come on, you're better than that. Is he going to look to the inside? No, thought better of it. But just looking back there, are where Giant's still, still lurking away? He's he's not oh, been hidden. Oh, Frantique has actually come into the pits. Mm, a little bit early, I'd suspect. But uh, there goes the Muck as well. He's he's jumped in as well. So the question is, is he going to get... Who is he going to be battling with? So he'll probably be down about... Yeah, just behind Boutel as Boutel... We'll watch an eye on him. Boutel's... Yeah, he's going to go behind Boutel. And he does come out but in fourth, though. Out. So this does give him a uh, bribe opportunity. Yeah, so he... Yeah, so the super, the, his uh, alternative strategy, shall we say, one that no one thought could be potentially possible, is potentially possible. The one stop, 11 laps on them, it's a long way to go on a set of tyres with the ultras. But now oh, no. all he has to do is stretch, stretch, stretch this set, this set if he's going to do it. He's, he's virtually made it halfway, but can he keep it going and hopefully... Get something out of this. Well, that is indeed what we will find out by the end of this race. Yeah, as, is he going to pit now? That's the question. Where would he come out? He would come out 
I believe you'd come out, I think you'd come out just ahead of Mucka, to be honest. Uh, and he does do pit, it so your pit. leader is in at the moment. Is Michael will continue as, uh, on the softs. Yep, Sobel over Giant. Frantique with the fresh rubber will be hunting them down. Has he been held in the pits? Oh, it's a bit long for the pit stop for the Ferrari boys. They weren't ready for him. So that's going to cost them time. They weren't ready for him when he came in. So now Krog has to make these tyres last as he's now going to drop ahead. He's going to get passed by Finlay. Yeah, he's dropped a hell of a lot of places as he had. I'm pretty sure he had some sort of penalty or some sort. He had to serve before he could get serviced. So that kind of hindered him. So Michael has a wear giants coming up behind him, but they both have Frantique who's on the fresh rubber, who's hunting both of them down. Both drivers ahead haven't made the pit stop. They're the only two not to make the pit stop, as you can currently see with the stops. So Butel's also yeah. not pitted. Okay, that's an interesting one. Butel's not made the pit the stop softs. either. So they should be going uh, a, a few more laps at least before they go into the pits. Yeah. Although it does look like Butel does have some front wing damage and he just seems to be struggling from what I can see around these corners at the moment. Yeah, and he has X Finland Xbox Life and Floodlines coming up behind him. Uh, Krog's not really that far behind them, but he's still quite a ways away. You may see Butel pit this lap for his to replace his front wing and probably jump onto a set of super softs if he does. Yeah, that would probably more likely be the strategy that he, he would do. Although he's, no, he's going to continue, interestingly. Yeah, he's going to suffer massively down here. As you see, Finlay on Xbox Live is climbing up to the back of him. He's going board now with Finlay. Is he going to look to the inside? No, Butel manages to get a little bit of a break there. But I, I fear he's going to just succumb to it. But Butel's going to try and just stay where he's going to stay. He's going to get the cut back. Finlay. Ooh, you wouldn't want to pass there. Don't. No, good man. That yeah, wouldn't pass there. Sensible. No, really wouldn't. It would not be the wisest. But out of all of this, we've only lost two drivers I believe I think one of them lagged out before the race started so unfortunately whoever that was that's it's a bit unfortunate uh, but we still have the rest of them only Nicholas is the only person not to have uh, be on any lap at the moment unfortunately as he did crash out for, uh, earlier on in the race yeah that's rather unfortunate also for my team but, uh... Yeah, as Frantique is closing up to the back of Aware Giant, so he will get DRS on Aware Giant. Uh, will Michael pit? No, nope. Aware Giant doesn't pit either. So, as they go on to lap 15, so only 14 laps. So, we're at the halfway mark now as they cross the line. With 14 laps completed, uh, your top 10 look like this. It's Mr. Michaels from Aware Giant. Frantique on the Supers, uh, making that one-stop strategy life work. Uh, Floodlines is in fourth with Finlay on Xbox Live, not that far behind them. We'll keep an eye on that battle at the moment. Butel, again, not that Frantique far behind them. Frantique gets past the Giant. Yep, yeah, as Frantique gets past the Word Giant and Master Krog's battling with Butel. So it's a battle that's going on, but Master Krog is on the Ultra Softs and should really be making up the time as he goes. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Frantique. Yeah, he's going to be the one that's going to make that strategy work. He's going to try and make it work as much as he can. Uh, but could could uh, Krog try and like, work something out of thin air? That may be a big question. Is George Gunn back? I think it's back? quite a big, big gap to be working something. Yeah, it doesn't, look to see, doesn't seem to look like both the Red Bulls and George are currently driving. Same with Elite Ryan, he doesn't look like he's currently in the race at the moment. Yeah, I have invited these guys back, but... Uh, does seem yeah, to me unfortunately not they've... quite annoying. I think they, ha they are having some issues. I'm going to invite them more. I'm going to do it one more time. See what we get. Master Krog's gone past Finlay, so that was an easy done deal. 
But is Frantique going to get past Michael? Michael's not going to make it easy. He looks to the inside. Michael leaves him the space. Is he going to get the cut back? No. Not a chance. And George has officially now left the session. Alright, okay. So he's yeah, not he's coming back. Hotel so is like he's now nice pitted. And he's been on to supers. So he's going to make the one stop go. And is away. Not been the best start for the Williams lads. Uh, not really had the best of luck at the start of the race, but hopefully we can come back next couple of races, even tomorrow with myself and my new teammate. I've actually forgotten who my teammate is, not Asa, that's the one. Yeah, me and Asa and, and, and teammates again in GP2, as we were in the Fries last year as well. Uh, oh, his front line's touches the one, it looks like he's lost half of his front wing. That's going to cost him yeah, big time. He's, he's lost a hell of a lot, and that's going to, yeah, that's going to make him suffer, you can already tell. Krog's already closing in and is just going to keep closing in. Flood Flood will fight this as much as he can, but he knows the inevitable will happen. He will be overtaken. I have this feeling that Flood will be coming in this lap, so... Krog shouldn't yeah. try too hard, otherwise uh, it could just cost him more than anything. Oh, He's he had a look looking. down inside. Flood is not Flood paying. Flood is carrying on. Okay. Oh, where Giants pitted, he's now on to Supers. Oh, as Flood has went on the brakes and uh, Krog was a little bit late to react to that and unfortunately drove into the back of him there. So he's broken a little bit of his front wing, which is going to cost him a little bit. I think he's worse, he's less worse off than uh, Flood, as Flood's lost a little bit more. Yeah, it will definitely still cost uh, Krog some though, so... Yeah. Krog will... I think Krog will have those another guys pit stop, battling. so... I think he'll replace it then when he does. He won't do it quite yet. As uh, we're still waiting yeah. for a pit from Michael, and he's the only one who hasn't pitted yet. Yeah, taking those softs all the way into probably the ultra soft window now. So yeah, if he leaves fair, it a couple right, more laps... Maybe lap or so. Yeah, he must be having serious... Uh, Tire degradation issues, but he's managed, managed to get up into second, and he's got a fair, oh, fair gap. As we say it. Oh, so as we see, Michael's coming into the pits now. It's that pit limiter, as pit limiter has been banned. You have to manually pit yourself. Uh, let's see, what's he going to do as he comes in? He's going to go into his supers. Yep, supers. But the question is, where is he going to come out relative to these guys? He's dropped down. Mucker's going to get past. Eyes is going to get past. As Eyes, the best actually, is coming out of the pit, so he's making his second stop. He's going to probably jump back onto the ultras again and try something from there. So he's going to get out. So Michael's actually did get out of ahead of a wear giant, but not by much. A wear giant managed to came come right out behind him, but right up behind him. As Michael's is trying to make that the widest task you have ever seen. And Eyes, like I called it, has went onto Ultra Softs and will just attack anything in front of him. So Patel's down 11th, Trex is 12th, Ultra Softs is 9th. So his teammates in 9th, only a couple places ahead of him. So it could be a good point. Um, could say a good finish for Haas, can, considering the polar opposites of qualifying that they both did have. Uh, Floodlines is, I don't think, it's going to. Going to try to chase down Frantique. I think Frantique's just he's got this he's got this yeah. done. He, all he's gotta do now is is he, he probably when he has pit games, all he's gotta do is control himself. Um so his one stop will work if he's not dumb about it pretty much. Yeah. As we see floodlines. Try to defend a little bit from uh, Master Krog. Can Master Krog try and eventually get the pass done that he's looking to get done? See, Finley is coming out of the pits. Yeah. Who's that ahead of him? Pirate Pants was coming out of the pits there. So Finley's in the pits. So that's another place for Michael. It'll be another place for Rare Giant. And I think that should be about it. I don't think uh, your teammate, uh, as I say that, your teammate is coming into the pits, Michael. As uh, Trex is also coming in. Matty GB's also came in. Finley's came out. Trex is now coming in, he's going to go into a set of ultras, uh, no softs, say sorry. 
So I think so at this stage, the, the the main two things that we could see change is maybe second place with Floodlines and Krog, and I think the only other thing that we might see uh, improvements from here is Michael. He's on a set of supers. He might be able to take full off of Mucker if he can get close to him. Yeah, but he's also not that far behind these guys, so he, if he plays it smart, he could potentially get maybe even a podium if he can get there. If Krog's tires fall off the absolute cliff, then yes, he will claw back all of that time. Indeed, I have, I have a feeling that Flood and Krog could have another pit in them though. Are they, are they oh, as you in? say that, Krog is pitting, so he's going to relinquish that uh, second place. Uh, sorry, that third place, and that will open the door for Mucka and Michael to make their next moves. So, Michael potentially could be grabbing his first podium. Michael saying uh, uh, the new fastest season. lap as well. Yeah, so those supers are definitely doing it for him. What did Krog move back onto? Yeah, he moved back onto another set of ultras. Is a George Garn pitting for a second time, but George Garn unfortunately isn't here in the race anymore. As we have a look further down the grid, as we see, my GB, he didn't, he's not had the best of starts. He was st he started third, but unfortunately the, the race just went away from him completely. It didn't fall the way he would have liked it to. He had a bit of a couple of shunts. Uh, same with Elite Ryan. Craig Senna hadn't had the best start as well. Same with Trex. Uh, Lucky didn't have the best start as well. I think he caught up in some action. Him and his teammate both did. I kind of sent him down. As potentially as you see there going past. So it will be a bit of a stagnant period at the moment with uh, 10 laps to go. Uh, currently at the moment, as Michael's trying also hard. Uh, Bloodlines are coming into hard. the pit, so this will promote uh, Mucker into second and uh, Michael's into third. So, so far, this will put Michael onto a podium. I think the next question yeah. then is can he take second off Mucker? This will be the. Uh, the last real question of the evening, I think, at this point. Pretty much, yeah, as Elite Ryan also made his pit stop. And there's a wait. So Finley's managed to take that as he's def he's actually battling with Rossos. Uh, Butel's also managed to get that place. Uh, Krog's managed to jump Floodlines in that, on all of that. So Floodlines got jumped by Krog. As Krog had the fresher tyres and the cleaner air, to be fair, to just push the car a little bit. Uh, Ice is trying to close down on Butel, but Sh Russell Shack is having a bit of a fight with Finlay on Xbox Live. As you see from the chopper cam there, he is closing all up the back of the uh, of the Toro Rosso, but isn't going to get anywhere with that, unfortunately. Uh, Bit too far back to try anything at this time. It's seemingly struggling to try and get that traction out of corners at the moment compared to Finley, so Finley's pulling a little bit of a gap at this moment of time. Yeah, but he's not exactly pulling away. As Krog's just been pegged for another three seconds, that may be significant in this. I think he was pinged earlier as well, so that may be more significant in the grand scheme of things, like I said earlier on in the race. So as we see, as just into the oh, pit. Uh, yeah, I was about to call that out there. It's a bit, a bit of a strange one. The tyres probably couldn't do the distance he was asking them to do. Krog's but uh, it was a lap. good try for... Wow. Krog's on a bit of a tear at the moment. So where's my GB? Uh, where go Is he going to get out, out ahead of Trex? Yeah, but he won't get that far there he goes it's gonna be so just keep about stopping. yeah but Rossos as you can see there is on the uh, ultras it does look like but he uh, does Rossos get... has some damage though on his front wing so that oh well, he may be on the faster tire but he may lose some time to understeer Actually, if it's not really affecting him, then he can just push the car all the way to the end now. Uh, we got, we got, 
tries the best, who's uh, slowly closing down Buto a little bit here. He's uh, just under the half a second mark, with Krog only three temps behind him. So this is a, currently a three-way battle here for sixth place. Yes, yeah, we go on board with uh, Mr. Krog. He's going to try and get as much much traction as he can. He closed a hell of a lot up to the back of Eyes the Best, but unfortunately that's not going to do anything. As Eyes the Best is just tanking away from him. Is trying to catch up to the back of the uh, the Williams of Butel. It seemed that while those two were having their little bit of a scrap, wasn't for very long, but they had a little bit of a scrap, and it's going to be to a little bit more of a gap to play with here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, as Muckers actually got him. past. Yeah, Muckers managed to get past uh, Michael. Uh, Michael was already ahead of Michael, but Michael is now closing the gap, if you remember correctly. Uh, he has closed oh, to got tenth, but anyway. he is being pinged for penalties, so that could cost him. got happening at the moment. Nothing much really happened personally yeah, as no, Trog is trying to close down eyes. Oh is he takes oh, he it down the inside but I ooh. I think his nose was on side there. I should have maybe have left that room. But uh Yeah but it wasn't that far on the inside too for anything to be made so Unfortunately, in that one, I wouldn't have put that down as an, anything, to be honest. He saw the gap, went for it, but he was just a little bit too far back. As Michael's now closed the if gap, he was right under the rear temps. ring, then I could... If he was right under the rear ring, then, yeah, I could see it happening, but just a little bit too far away. As, uh, I don't know if you're getting this, but Michael for me has got a little bit of the old uh, red glitch, which is always fun. But he is, uh, he was closed up to three temps on Michael. He's lost a little bit of time moving through that middle sector. Uh, as Bog's trying to catch back up, so why is the best? I think they're the only two real kind of little battles happening at the moment. And Rossos is slowly catching Craig, but it's not really for any kind of significant uh, points or anything. As Rossos does get past Craig, but I'm not entirely sure how there. Mm. Well, uh, as the best and Krog are going back at it and as Krog tries to get the possession. I missed that. I didn't see what happened there, but Krog did get it. Yeah, it was the same spot again. He tried the previous lap down the inside. I think this time he actually was defending the inside there. Uh, best was. So I think Krog decided to go around the outside. Uh, Michaels is now two and a half tenths behind Mucker again. So he's uh, closed that gap back up again. It's really not fun for me to watch Michael at the moment with this red glitch. But he's, he's right on the back of Mucker here. He's not going to look here, surely. Too dangerous. Going to look for a good run out of here, though, possibly. Very, very nice run oh, through there. Oh, he's got a decent run now. Going down the inside. They go down break as he keeps it there. And, yeah, that very nice. Lined it up through the chicane and just kept it alongside. Yeah, well, as we're winding down this race with a couple of laps to go now, as we're looking at this little bit of a tussle between, uh, I forgot where I am, between Mucker and Michael, and Michael has actually made that position on Mucker, so we kind of missed that, but I wasn't actually looking at the screen there. I mean, I did uh, kind of describe it, I'm surprised you weren't looking at it when I was commentating it, yeah. Um, as essentially, Michael lined up the car behind him down through the uh, left right chicane, like fast chicane. Uh, he kept it all the way down into the following braking zone and just kept it down the inside, which was wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel stuff. Very clean enough, I think. So uh, that's how that was done. Fairly simple, to be fair. 
Uh, Floods is now going at it with eyes the best. He's uh, one and a half times he's going to be looking here, but it'd be a really risky move to make a move there. As he's lining his car up into the next braking zone as he's on the gearbox of uh, eyes the best. Doesn't quite have the braking, thinks better of it. Now, when he try what Michael did through here, when he uh, lined his car up through this little uh, look right fast chicane and uh, line it to break zone, I think he's a little bit far behind unless he can get a really good run through here. Oh, it was a great run compared to Ice the Best. Ice the Best has made a huge mistake and hit a wall. I think that's Ice the Best out. As indeed. So the man that was running in ninth place is no longer ninth. That move, Matty GB and Trex up to the points paying positions. Uh, rather unfortunate. So for close from there. the end, and unfortunately, tragedy has struck him. Uh, I think that's all the battles done on track now. I think, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Sort of. I mean, you got Ross yeah, the only other battle that I can see at the moment would be the battle between Flood and Botel. So like Master Krog and Botel, but Botel is just uh, yeah. And yet there you you have got uh, Raw Source and Craig as well, 11th and 12th. But it's not really for anything too sufficient. But it is the closest one at the moment. As Raw Source is going to get DRS down the start finish straight. He was very close there, he could have probably looked for a move, but he just kept the car behind. Lining it up for this next DRS. Yeah, his car's now alongside, very around the outside. He keeps it there, which means he's got the inside for the next turn. And, oh, that's put them both into a tricky situation there. And I think that will probably be the end of that battle now, uh, which means that we've just got Krog and Butel left at the moment. So as we're going around onto the last couple of laps, can Krog looking to get past them? As under braking Krog does get does close the gap under braking there, which is uh, what he definitely needs to be doing. Seems to get a little bit of a tap of the wall there, so that's going to cost him some time. So, uh, Dom, at this point, we, we need to name a driver of the day so uh, they can get their bonus. Uh, I, I think we can call it as uh, Michael to get driver of the day. But at last, sat in second, this is a, it's a very good drive from him today. It definitely is. Uh, I wouldn't put it past him for getting drive of the day myself. I think he more than deserves it after what happened to him in qualifying. Uh, unfortunately, crashed and killed himself. But currently is running in that second place as... Where is Frantique? As Frantique is currently on his last lap. Uh, we'll come back to him in a minute. Uh, further down, who's on a battle? Krog and Butel are having a battle, so that'll be one to watch in the last coming laps. Uh, only half a second, so not many places where he could make that up. Did he get DRS from George Garton? That's the question. No, he did not. And Krog's looking to gain that bit of time on Butel. Ooh. Does gain a bit of time, but I don't know if it's going to be... Oh, he's lost traction, though. That's, I think that's going to be it. I think that's his last opportunity to line his car up. That's gone. Yeah, as you say that, come round the final turn. He put it... He didn't put it on pole. Put it nearly there. He made the madman decision of the one stop, but for the opening race of the season, it's Frantique. He takes 25 points and... The first race of his career in the F1 division. 
And it's going to be very close it's... between second and third. Michael and Mucker. This could yeah, all Michael change Mucker, depending on that's... penalties. Michael does cross the line in second and does keep it. Ooh, but Bauer Giant, giant gets third, third, actually. Wow, okay. So, Gee, uh, Marco yeah, okay. getting one too many penalties there for himself. Yeah. Oh, as Flood Lines jumps up into sixth, as Brutel and Krog had penalties themselves. Matty GB comes ninth. Mm -hmm. And the last point scorer will be Trex. As he is the last man on the current lead lap. And well, there so we have there it. you have it. Yeah. So Frantique is your winner from uh, Mr. Michael and uh, a wear giant. So the Toro Rosso driver will be having kittens. He'll be enjoying every second of it as he will be stepping onto the top step of that podium. As there he is, Frantique. He'll be collecting the trophy and and the rest of the Toro Rosso team there will be happy celebrating that back at the factory in Italy. They'll be absolutely enjoying it. And there you go, the spray of champagne. Reno boss, uh, I've, uh, fr Franz Tost, no, it's, yes, yeah, Franz Tost, there he is there. He'll be absolutely enjoying that, that he's uh, got a driver that's won another race for him. It's been a long time, but there you are. There, uh, wow, I'm behind Franz Tost, sort of way. So, Mr. Michael yeah, from our uh, Giant. I don't have uh, actually uh, uh, budget minuses for the team, so there will be a few uh, budget costs there from uh, some drivers. Yeah, there will be that. So, we will get that uh, sorted. Uh, we will also be getting the uh, points updated. That will be... Oh, right, I've just read chat. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, apparently, you needed to invite uh, George back as he got disconnected like five laps ago. Uh, Lucky got disconnected as well, but he managed to get back. Uh, so, why is Butel joining the party? Uh, I'm not entirely sure I'm inviting Butel. Why do you, why do you like to listen? Uh, Don't listen on the gossip. Well, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say this, you need to be removed. Sorry. Um, yes. leave him, just leave him be, if he's not going to say anything, just oh, leave him be. Oh Christ, okay, I'll Sorry. leave you guys be then, I'll be a uh, nice guy for once. Well, we need uh, the top two, so where the fuck, well we've got Frantique, so where the fuck's a weird giant? I don't know, I have invited him, um, but he doesn't seem to have joined. <coughs> well, uh... So, uh... We'll start with these two while we see if we can get a wedge on him. Uh, right. Okay, bear with me a second then. <sighs> I need to be composed. Well, well so, so, that was uh, crazy qualifying. Uh, a very good race. Uh, yeah, we had a bit of rumours before the race started that uh, Frantique was going to do the one-stop. He's managed to pull that off out of nowhere somehow. So, uh, how did you manage it? And congratulations on your first win in uh, the F1 division on your opening race. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I don't really know how I managed. I guess it's my just my driving style. Uh, qualifying it was a bit disappointing for me. Uh, being fifth, but um, the guys in F1 are just so fast. You got to be on your game to uh, to be. In. So, uh, uh, the race, race first corner was uh, not first corner. It was second corner. There's a bit of contact in front of me, so I managed to get up into second, uh, which was needed because there was George Barton pulling away quite fast. So, it's a shame he disconnected, but, uh, yeah, happy with the win. Yeah, well, congratulations on that win, and we'll move to uh, second place. Uh, yeah, you had an 
absolute horror show of qualifying, Michael. Uh, what actually happened <laughs> in qualifying? Um, um, I can't, I can't really explain it. Um, but I'll try. Got a slide on the fast left and right, and it was almost as if, you know, sometimes if you're on a wheel, your wheel sort of locks as you're turning, and then you're constantly turning wherever you did. That's basically uh -huh. what happened, but. I got a slide and just didn't correct it in time when I was in the wall. Wow. Yeah, uh, but coming back to yourself on that one anyway, after qualifying, what the hell happened? You were 19th, you were dead last. How did you pull out second place? Um, what, what, what I would say is I'll take this podium very humbly because there was a lot of things that happened in front of me, including... Uh, a bit of lag, unfortunately, as well as cars flipping into turn three. I just didn't know where to turn and so on and so forth. But as I said, I take this podium very humbly and very luckily because it wasn't wasn't very interesting. But I just pulled up the one stop. I, I realised I was on to something when I came. I think it was like that five. I think it was eight or something, and I thought, no, I can try and get some points out of this and then all of a sudden towards the end of the race you had all the guys pitting and I thought oh I'm third oh there's Mark in front of me he's on soft tyres I can try and get him and I did and got to hold my hand up it was a good race of him actually towards the end I don't know if you caught it yeah we caught every second of it it was it was a quite enjoyable race uh, well we unfortunately don't have our giant with us so that's he's not joining of, uh, Bit of a sad thing. We could have got his piece of what he had to say during the race. Uh, well, guys, if you did enjoy that, uh, feel free to let the guys know tomorrow. You will be with Michael, and is it Shaq that's with you tomorrow, Michael? Rossos, yes. Because yeah. Krug, so unfortunately, Rossos, Shaq, cannot and... do it this week, so he'll be doing it next week. So be hosted yeah, by go. Callum. Yes, so tomorrow you'll be hosted with Ross or Shaq and Mike will be your cameraman. Uh, well, it's been an interesting race. Hopefully we can see some more of that tomorrow in the GP2 race. You can catch that at uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow and you can catch us next week at China. Which is a bit weird to fucking say. But anyway, it's been goodbye from the podium. Bye. Bye. And... It's been goodbye from Michael, uh, not Michael, Martin. You keep doing this, but bye-bye. And it'll be bye from myself, and we'll see you next week for the next race. But until then...